Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Have you ever wondered what are the items that you would most want if there was, say, a collapse of society and you actually had to live off your wits and a few items? What would you really want? What would be most useful to you? Well, I've been fortunate in my life that my passion is for travel and I've traveled to all seven continents. I've been all over the world and I love traveling and that's one of the biggest problems with this coronavirus COVID pandemic is all the lockdowns and the cancellation of all the travel and I haven't been able to go places like I enjoy. One of my favorite places to go in the world is to Africa. I've been many times to Africa to many different countries. I've been way out in the bush and guess what? That is living off of the land. That is living on your wits and a few simple tools. It's a real wake up call when you look at how simple people in other cultures live, the few things they have and what they value the most. Over the years that I've been traveling there, I've tried to bring things that are useful to people to hand out into the communities that I visit that welcome me and help me on my journeys. So one of the first things that I found that is the most useful is a little multi-tool. Many of the places I've gone, once I've handed out a few, other people have asked me, could they please have one of the special knives? because they're so handy. They're small and compact, but they can do a lot of things. I go places like Cabela's and I buy several dozen of the little multi-tools. I take them out of the wrapper because the packaging just adds weight in your suitcase. I put them in the little cases that I can pass them out to people that I think would find them helpful. After having a nice knife, what did I find that people wanted the most was a padlock. They could build little sheds and they wanted a way to lock the shed so that they could have their things be safe, whether it was their little home, the place where they stored their belongings, or sometimes even their business. They wanted a padlock. Most of the padlocks there were ones with a key, which can be problematic if you don't have a pocket and you lose your key, what can you do? So I asked them, why don't you have the ones with a combination lock? And they said, oh my gosh, those are so expensive that it was too valuable for most of them to have. So now that's the next thing I bring is a padlock that has a combination. You can remember your combination, but you may not remember what happened to your key, which could be a real problem in an emergency. Next, they asked for toothbrushes. Simple hygiene items that we take for granted are something that other people who have little really want. Many of the people that I met had very few articles of clothing. Their items are few, they have to take care of them, and so the next thing I brought were little sewing kits. It didn't matter whether they were men or women, they were thrilled to have a little sewing kit. These are simple sewing kits that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I always take several dozen of those and pass those out as well. Sometimes they were unfamiliar with how to work some of the things such as the needle threader and so I would take a few, show them quickly how you open the little containers to get the needles out, how you thread the needles, how to use the needle threader and they were thrilled then to know that they had the ability to take care of the things that they have. It's amazing how few simple little items can really make a difference in someone's life. The next category is school supplies. I've been to schools where they had nothing. We met a man in a marketplace who saw someone in our group had a pen in like their shirt pocket and he said could I have that for my daughter for school you can choose anything from my shop if I could have that pen how many of you are willing to trade nearly anything to help your child have a writing utensil so I always try to take basic school supplies 
I try to pack them up with a few drawstring backpacks because the kids are carrying their paper and their book back and forth to school and I saw them out in the rain with just a torn up plastic bag trying to keep their paper dry. They just don't have the things we take for granted. I try to stock up a little at a time and buy a few things so that by the time I'm ready to go on my next adventure, I have a nice stash of supplies to take. What do I want when I travel to a place like that? I want water filters because clean water just doesn't exist. I've been to Mozambique where they told us consider no water safe to drink in the entire country. It's a way of life, lots of places. So you need to learn to take care of yourself. How can you provide the most basic things which include clean drinking water? Make sure that you have a water filter, maybe some aqua tabs, water purification tablets. Learn how to boil water. Stock up on water the best that you can, then get a few supplies so that you can purify water if you need to. Mosquitoes, tetsy flies, all kinds of insects can be a real problem. And so I always take a supply of mosquito coils. I've made a few videos on how you use a mosquito coil if you've never seen them before or never used them. It's something you need to use in a ventilated area. Light them around on the edge of the patio and they can keep the bugs away for an open space. Then you also need a way to light a mosquito coil. It's also great to stock up on some mosquito repellent and sunscreen. If you're going to be out of doors trying to make your own way in the world, make sure that you're protecting yourself from the basics of too much sun and too many bugs. Clean socks make anyone's day better and even out in the farthest, most remote areas I've been in the world, people actually had cell phones. They would stop by little markets and they would pay to have them charged and they would pay to buy more minutes. So make sure that you have a way to charge up your cell phone. They seem to work almost everywhere. Then there are the vices. No matter where you go in the world, people enjoy their vices. They like cigarettes, they like alcohol. If those are items that you enjoy, make sure that you have an extra supply so that you don't run out during a crisis situation. People without their vices in a crisis can really practically lose their mind. So what are some items that you can stockpile, hoard, even consider bartering? Should we have a collapse in society? The most basic items that people find to help their world be a little better. These are the items that I found were worth stocking up, packing up, and taking all the way to Africa. So you can bet that I like to have those supplies when I'm at home in Alaska just as much. Think about the things that would be most useful to you if you had nothing. And those are the items that you want to make sure that you're stockpiling and that you'll have no matter what the future holds. Hopefully this pandemic will straighten out, the economy will revive, the world will become a better place, and we can all start doing the things we enjoy most. For me, it would be traveling to places that I have not yet been. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone you think might like it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.